Hello, hello. Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I'm one of your hosts, and we are joined by Marcus Stewart today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. That is great to hear. Uh, anything big happening today? Uh, not that I know of. Um, why? Yeah, Have you seen either. something? I think I saw that Game Informer site like revealed their latest cover or something like that. I don't, do you know anything about that? Um, you know, now that you say that, I, I think someone mentioned that the, the writer's name sounds very familiar. Uh, it, it sounds a lot like mine because I wrote that thing. Hey. <laughs> hey, and you know what? You were there, too. I was. Yeah, we are uh, possibly the foremost experts on the game we are checking out today, which is No Rest for the Wicked. It is an action RPG from the developers of Ori and the Will of the Wisps and Ori and the Blind Forest Moon Studios. Um, yes, so our cover is revealed and it is beautiful and we have uh, No Rest for the Wicked on the cover. Marcus wrote the cover story. I handled some video and was there with him checking out the game. Uh, if you're looking for exclusive details, you're going to have to wait till our actual issue is out. But what we're checking out today is a preview we got um, alongside a bunch of other outlets and streamers and stuff. It's basically the beginning of the game, maybe the first 60 or 80 minutes. And you got to play the game a bunch uh, at Moon Studios in Vienna, Austria. I did not, and I was very jealous, but I finally got to play this, and I am so stoked because I am really, really enjoying it. And I wanted to highlight this game's intro one, because it's all I can, and also I think it's a really good setup for uh, everything that is coming in the game, uh, which is to say I'm really enjoying this action RPG. What do you think of it, Marcus? Yeah, I, I've enjoyed my time with it. Uh, so yeah, I guess the basic premise for those that don't know, um, it's an action RPG uh, kind of inspired by games like Diablo, but also very much influenced by uh, From Software Soul series, especially in terms of the combat. Um, you're playing this sort of like holy warrior uh, in this world that has been overtaken by this uh, this blight called the pestilence that has turned people into these monsters. And there's uh, also like political intrigue at play with like the death of a king and the succession of his son, who seems like maybe not a great person trying to deal with this blight. Uh, and it's unique for Moon Studios because, again, they're known for the the Ori games. Uh, so for them to tackle something like a lot more, you know, I was like dark and like action oriented, even though the, the or games do have some action in it, especially the second one, but also something that has like, like the storytelling going for like, a, like a full production of like, oh, voice acting and like all these fully fleshed out characters and, and almost like a, a kind of like Game of Thronesy kind of like vibe to it you know it, yes. it, with with like the narrative and whatever um also games going into early access uh they're doing an early access launch for this game uh first time they've ever done that so this is a game that'll be launching uh with like a good amount of content but will grow over time as uh you know players give their input and and whatnot but yeah i've uh i'm a big fan of the ori games they're two of my favorite metroidvanias ever um, mm -hmm. And I've been so excited to see that studio tackle something new just to see what else they were capable of. And I from what I played of this game, because I, you know, I played a lot of this section, too. Um, I've been impressed as a fan of action RPGs. Like I, I enjoy Diablo. I enjoy uh, from software games. They're they're kind of nailing it so far. Like it's a it's a neat blend. Like I think the combat feels pretty good. Uh, it's got that weighty kind of deliberate feel that you would expect. But it's also very um, kind of like like performance and like combo focus where like you have all these different uh, timing based combos and inputs, almost kind of like a fighting game. And what's also really unique about the game is that it doesn't have any traditional classes. So like instead, you know, you create a custom character and every weapon you pick up pretty much gives you like a very specific fighting style. So if you use like a, a mace, you, you have like a heavier style where like you swing heavier, your dodge roll is different. Whereas if you use daggers, you are like faster and you have like a dash instead of like a dodge roll. So it's like yeah. it's kind of like a more like loose way to do classes. And you can like build towards like, oh, I want to be like what you would consider a traditional barbarian. You would just have to get the gear to sort of uh, facilitate that. But it gives you a chance to and you can also switch weapons on the fly. So you can like switch between different fighting styles, essentially with a button press. And I, I think that's and, kind and of changing uh, those weapons affects you immediately too. like 
uh, you'll, you could see it here, but like when I switch from my sword and shield to the dual daggers, I go from a heavy load to a normal load. Um, yeah. Which is pretty interesting mid combat to do because all of a sudden you're going from like the classic Dark Souls fat roll to like big uh, dodge rolls. Um, which is, yeah, I think probably one of my favorite parts is just being able to switch on the fly. I think another thing, too, is um, just the presentation. Like, you know, the aura games look fantastic. And I think No Rest for the Wicked looks gorgeous. Like it's got a very kind of like oil painting kind of yes. look to it. Um, like, I don't even know if like <laughs> if YouTube compression or anything does will, will truly do the game justice. But like, you know, playing it on like a big TV, you see like the the brush strokes kind of like on the textures and it, you know it's raining right now and the way it sort of like runs down uh the stone like the lighting looks really nice like it, mm -hmm. it, it is like moving through like a 3d painting uh which makes it really alluring and also just the uh this is an interesting maybe one more interesting things was just uh talking about like just the infusion of the two styles because like if you've noticed uh you know a lot of like games like diablo you're fighting like a gazillion enemies at once um mm -hmm. whereas this is a lot more intimate you know you're fighting like two three enemies at a time but like the enemies themselves are like really tough again drawing that that souls distinction you know right where like you need to be on your game and like you're approaching a save point or, or checkpoint <laughs> there yeah uh, it's like um they it looks like diablo and it is an action rpg like diablo but they wanted to get away from like the uh button spamming of Diablo, which, you know, is great in its own right. And so what you have is like this isometric RPG that plays as if you're playing like a Dark Souls type game. Um, mm. and, it, and it works really well. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's other games that have done this. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but it, it feels new to me. Um, but it works really, really well. And like you said, yeah, you're not going to be fighting 10 enemies at once or like mobs it's one to two enemies and any more than that it gets really stressful really fast yeah i'm curious because like you mentioned you haven't gotten to play it until now what have, how are you been feeling about it as someone that's uh sort of finished this build i'm i'm really really enjoying it like it's i think it's going to be the first early access game that i play and stick with um because outside of like work obligations and duties i don't really play early access games because i'm kind of the person that's like well, it's going to be 1.0 one day. Why don't I just wait till then? Right. Um, and I understand and the some way. people. Yeah. And some people like being like in that guinea pig type of test chamber for a game, which is fine. And there's a lot of games that are great in early access. Um, but I usually it's just not my vibe usually. But I think this is going to be the first one that I like really get into. Um, I'm just I'm just really digging it. I'm a, I'm a sucker for this type of action. Like you mentioned, it's it's a gorgeous game. And again, it's uh, we're probably not even doing it justice here with YouTube compression and all that. It is so gorgeous. This is also a pre early access build, so it's still um, like the early access build will be better. And I think it is like kind of pushing my PC to the limits uh, because really? yeah, not uh, I mean, my my PC could probably use an upgrade at this point, and I'm within the 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 uh, like minimum recommended requirements or whatever. Um, but yeah, I was like running into some like glitching or sound would drop out and stuff. I'm not sure if that's the build more so that it is just my actual PC, but like nonetheless, gorgeous game and it feels really nice and it's smooth. Um, they've clearly prioritized like a 60 frames per second frame rate, actually probably even higher if you're on a beefy PC because this early access is going to be PC only. Um, yeah, but yeah the, game, am, the game is coming I'm to hooked. consoles for those that are wondering like when it goes 1.0. Uh, yes, but yeah, PC only for now. But yeah, yeah, all that is to say I'm, I'm hooked and I, I I pretty much like everything it's doing. I don't really have any complaints. Like it's it's just good, which is not surprising. It's Moon Studios. Their games, perhaps more than most games out there, just feel so dang good. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, we won't get into like our, our cover story per se, just because we have some um, things like some exclusive stuff that uh, we can't talk about just yet. But, you know, that'll be coming uh, next week, uh, March 5th. So at least for the digital issue and then, you know, physical uh, a couple weeks after that. So you have to wait terribly long to read uh, read that. But yeah, just uh, picking uh, the co-founders of Moon's uh, brains about this game was was really fascinating because their love of like so many different genres was just like very clear. Like, you know, Thomas Mailer, who's one of the co-founders, you know, he used to work at Blizzard. So 
you know, he Diablo is a series particularly that is like near and dear to his heart. Like I, he probably referenced Diablo one and two like a hundred times <laughs> during our discussions there about like how, you know, what he loves about it and what he wanted to see from the series that didn't happen, that he he implemented into No Rest for the Wicked and also just like how the Ori games kind of helped them build up to their like the expertise and like the the maturity as a studio for them to tackle this because this was a game they had in mind for a long time uh and they just sort of like really took their time before they decided like hey you know maybe we can do this maybe we can make this cool rpg and i one thing i i, I always kind of like pause at especially as you do more combat i really like the animation like it's got like a yeah. exaggerated look that i really appreciate like the the, the swings yes, like how you just yeah. throw your whole body yeah like it's not going for like total realism which i appreciate yeah it's um i wrote in uh i have a written preview up on the site uh that's also now live and it's basically my words here but put onto a page uh for you to read online um yeah it's kind of it's like a I, I wrote that it's like a especially my character it's like a gothic painting that's like started to melt almost like everything uh. is like caricaturized or like uh yeah like it's it's just such a cool visual style it's it looks realistic, but it's not, if that makes sense. You know, like, this looks like it could be real, but then it's, like, clearly not. This is, like, a fantasy realm where things are a little messed up in the, uh, I don't know. It's, like, it's, I guess it's kind of like the Ori games. Like, those games are gorgeous and still whimsical and fantastical. This is, like, taking the whimsy out of the Ori games, and, and instead of whimsy, you're getting, like, medieval misery uh, <laughs> with that classic Moon Studios art style. Yeah, which if, if you're any sort of historian, I feel like medieval history is probably all misery when you think yeah, about it. Yeah, just a bit. Yeah, yeah I like so. I think happiness is very relative in that time. Um, I, as, as you might have noticed that uh, Wes is, was like picking up like mushrooms and stuff. Like there's a whole crafting system with this game. Uh, you know, you're mm -hmm. going to be taking ingredients to certain vendors to uh, create uh, or improve items. Uh, you can cook. At uh, campfires, you can make uh, dishes that give like sort of beneficial stat bonuses. And I think the other thing we haven't touched on is the sort of um, randomization element of the game. Yes. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Where uh, so the game it, like it's a sort of encourage replayability and, and like also just like unpredictability is that uh, loot and equipment is randomized, meaning that like when you first start the game and you find your first chest, like you might find like a sword. But if you were to replay the section again, and open that chest, you might get like a mace or you're just going to get a different weapon. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that applies to basically everything in the gear. And, you know, the level design is the same way. But what's cool is that everything's handcrafted in the world. Like there's no procedural generation used. But what they did was basically just handcraft everything multiple times and then just mm -hmm. have like a system that like doles it out in, yeah, in like sort of like, like a randomized random way. Speed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's like everything is like no matter how much it changes, everything is still like purposely hand placed, which is like a really cool idea because um, then you kind of yeah. get that like, I guess, like that sense of like human made craftsmanship, no matter what, um, while also like keeping you on your toes and like freshening up levels that you're probably going to be visiting repeatedly as you like farm ingredients or, or maybe experience or maybe you just want to go kill something because it, it feels good to kill something you know <laughs> yeah it's nice because i don't typically like like when i hear procedurally generated it's almost like a turnoff for me and i know teams do a lot to make procedurally generated worlds feel great and look great but i don't know like there's a big difference for me between hearing procedurally generated and uh like handcrafted like this um even if it is random uh, it just feel, I don't know, I guess like the human touch is something I really appreciate in uh, games like this. Um, yeah, so I can say it adds that element of like knowing that like, oh, yeah, they they put this here for a reason, you know, yes, whether or not yeah. I like the reason that's up to me. But it's kind of like, I don't know, there's something to knowing that a, a machine or an algorithm didn't just randomly put something there. As we look at the uh, the first boss of the game, which if you're a Souls fan, you probably would consider this like the gut check I'm like all right let's yep. see what you've learned up to this point yeah this is warwick the torn um gave me a good good bit of struggle last night as i was uh playing this 
Um, very cool boss. Very disgusting I'm, monster looking. Like a crab legs or whatever. Yeah. Kind of like, like rib, it, rib. it used to be a human, maybe? I assume. I, I, I believe so. I, yeah, I believe it was a human that was like transformed horribly by the, the pestilence. Like he just yeah. got a face full of pestilence, I guess. Um, poor, poor Warwick. I wonder who. And you can see that like. He's no joke, like I'm hitting him a lot and his health bar is not going down and I'm not under leveled. Like I played a good bit of this game before getting to him. Um, they're just now, not now, messing around with bosses. Now, Wes, I, I'm not going to humble brag, but you know, you were there for the cover trip. It took me only two tries to beat Warwick. And the did, first try, yeah. I almost had him. How many times? You did. did. How many tries did it take you? It took me three times. So uh, as okay. we discussed before on New Gameplay Today, Marcus is our professional gamer here on staff. Um, <laughs> I witnessed it in real time. It was a sight to behold. I tried my best to beat this dude in two times, but it just wasn't possible. Hey, three uh, still pretty good. Yeah, I'm still I'm still pretty stoked about three. Um, and it's I think uh, like the it's one of those bosses where you have to learn its patterns and recognize it. So like beating it on the first try, good luck. I'm sure somebody will, I'm, certainly somebody will do it, but that's a tough challenge. You need to at least be able to see how he works. You need to realize that he does that freaking very evil midair pause that bosses like to do where they oh, stop. The delay. Yeah, the delay that just kills you every time and it makes you want to throw your controller, but then you're like, ah, that was very good. Um, but yeah, so that, that's my first death. I can't remember if I cut out the second death or not. Um, I probably did, because we don't need to watch me die a bunch. But uh, who, what who I learned here, yeah, what I learned here with trying to beat him is uh, pairing is, is key to defeating him. Right, because uh, there is a parry system. Yes, um, which, so when you use a, any weapon, you can parry by pulling the right trigger, or left trigger um, on the controller. Uh, but if you have like the dual daggers, for example, you can't block because you don't have a sword. You're holding two swords in. So all you have is that parry. Whereas with this current build, I have the sword and the shield. I can hold the left bumper to block, which decreases my stamina, but reduces damage. Or I can outright parry, which is like a shield bash uh, with L2, which I Ooh, just did right go. there. Yeah, that, and then look at that. That's satisfying Opens parry. Also, yeah, I... That, I'm sorry, I, I'm only, I don't know why I'm not, I didn't acknowledge this before or notice, but like, what's on, what is on your head? Is that like a plank? Like a board? I don't know. I, it, it gave me a good armor boost. I think it's one of those things you put like prisoners in for the town yeah. square. Is that like your helmet? Is that what yeah, that's, that's my that's my equipped helmet currently. OK, yeah, I don't know why it was just I did only now dawned to be like, wait, what? what is that? <laughs> yeah, my guy, my guy's going through it. This is not not a good place to be. Yeah. Um, I, you're doing pretty good. Just, I'm, I'm rooting for you here. This is getting kind of down to the wire. You're getting pretty good with that parry. Yeah, I think. Let's see, do it again. Yeah, I do. Yeah, nice. That I like the way he just like he he just bounces by his whole body just recoils off that parry. And oh, oh there you go. Yes, I there did. There you it. go. You, the board. But yeah, that is no rest for the wicked. This is just a taste of what's to come. Uh, like we've mentioned a few times, Marcus and I visited Moon Studios, and he played a bunch of the game. We've got obviously the cover story and, and more stuff coming next week when our issue launches. So if you like this, uh, go read my written preview on the site right now and then keep GameInformer.com and your mailboxes bookmarked because we have even more No Rest for the Wicked content coming your way. Marcus, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye.